Excel has lots of very useful built-in functions. Functions can return values, do calculations for you, and we're going to have a quick look at some of them here and how they work. I want to put in today's date here, and then every time Excel opens, it will automatically update it to whatever the current date is. I'm going to do something here with this cell here, which will put in today's date and time. Now, I happen to know that the function for doing today's date is called today, and if I type it in and press enter, you'll see it's put in today's date and it's got this function up at the top here. You might notice I typed in in lowercase and it converted it to uppercase. It's a bit of an indicator that actually it's correct. If I'd spelt anything incorrectly there, it may not have changed into uppercase and it would probably throw him back an error at me actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete it because you don't have to remember those. You can go into insert and choose function or what most people do, there is this little insert function button here with this little fx on the formula bar. If you click on it, it gives you the same dialog box. There's a search box here which we're not going to use just yet. We're actually going to look for our function that we want from our category list. There's one here called date and time, so at a pretty good guess that is what we're looking for. The function is called today. And if you're not sure, it actually tells you down here, returns the current date formatted as a date, and it actually shows you what the function looks like. So I'm going to click on OK. It tells me here in this function arguments dialog box that this is volatile. That just means it's reading it off the system and automatically changing. So I'm going to click on OK. And it's popped it in there for me, which is great. So I'm now going to do the same again for this one here. But the fact that I've said now next to it probably indicates what the function is going to be called. So I'm just going to click on my insert function again. You always must make sure you're in the cell where you want the answer to actually appear. So I'm just going to click on insert function. I'm going to scroll down this list and there it is. There's one called now. Returns the current date and time formatted as a date and time. Click on OK. Once again, in my function arguments it says it's volatile because it's reading it off the system. And I click on OK. And there you have it. You have the date and the time. OK, so that's just an introduction to those date functions, but there are more. We're going to take a quick look on this spreadsheet here. I've got some students with some scores. I'd like to know their average, highest and lowest value. So I'm now going to go and find one for this average here. I'm going to click on my insert function. I'm going to now click on this drop-down list. It might be on my most recently used list. These are the functions that you happen to use the most. I'm now going to look in my most recently used list. This is very useful because people only tend to use the same functions over and over. And you may as well just quickly have a look here if you do use this. And there is average. Click on average. Click on OK. And it now takes me to my function arguments dialog box. We didn't get this last time in that we could actually fill anything in. It's picked up automatically B3 to B10, which is B3 to B10. That would be OK because these two are blank and it wouldn't affect the calculation. However, if I wanted to, I could just highlight the ones I want in case it hasn't highlighted the correct range. I could add another range if I want. I can click here and then highlight another block and so on and so on. And I can do up to 30 of these. I don't have to fill them in. You'll notice this one's in bold. That means it has to be filled in. Any of those that are not bold don't have to be filled in. It's giving me an average here of 61. I'm going to click on OK. So there you go, there's your average. And it would change if I changed it. But before I try that, I'm just going to click here and go for the highest. Now, I don't know what that function is called. So I'm just going to click on Insert Function. And this time I'm going to search. It's already highlighted. I'm going to type in highest and see what it comes up with. Press Enter, or I could have clicked on Go. It comes up with a recommended list, max A. That's not the one I want to happen to know that it is max for maximum. Returns the largest value in a set of values. So I'm going to click on OK. Again, just like the average, I can highlight the correct range. It didn't highlight the correct range. It was actually taking the value straight out of there. It's telling me that the highest value is 78, which we can see here is correct. I'm going to click on OK. 
I'm not going to do the same for the lowest. At a guess, you might think, well, if it was max, it's probably min, and you would be correct. But just in case, we're going to type in lowest and see if that comes up on the list. And sure enough, it does. Min is the lowest. It's short for minimum. And I'm going to click on OK. Again, I'm going to highlight these here. You see it's come up B11 to B12. That's those two there. That's not correct. I'm going to highlight that. Click on OK, and that's given me the lowest of values. So I now have the average, the highest, the lowest. If any of these change, if that became 85, that would now be the highest. And if this one here became the lowest, there we go, they automatically change, and so has the average. So that is a quick introduction to functions in Excel.